So this is the basic uh, blueprint for the XRIF style synthesizer, keytar, uh, centaur. So this half here is going to be the modular boxed in guitar um, source and it's static so you should be able to play this and it has some quality to it that's usable just on its own and this section is the fuzzy synthy trippy crazy fattening um, texturizing process this is section two and so um, the thing is is that so the modeling side is going to be based on the guitar and simulating some kind of either clavinet or guitar and then it has these four essential ingredients here that are the most critical and those will probably each be a different um, instrument but it'll be a similar sound and the same with this is a similar thing except it's going to be more analog modeling, additive modeling, more synthesis modeling because you don't need two guitar modeling systems. Um, I guess you could have extras with two guitars, but you know, right now we just want to focus on creating unique textures with the idea of using a guitar style articulation and then running that through to the synthesizer. <clears throat> and so, um, this also has those four modes. And so they're going to be four separate entities because the XY will be able to morph between, you know, like XY is how they can just go into those little sweet spots of the volume. So you can morph in between these four different sections, theoretically. So the filter sizer is kind of the exterior portion of both of these units. So the filter sizer's point is to control the sort of the, the vertical width of the sound. So if it's a, if you want a really fat sound, you should be able to utilize the, the filter sizer to expand on, let's say, the bandwidth or the, the band pass of the signal. And so they both can have these. So if you want the guitar to have a fatter uh, body, you can adjust the filter sizer. If you want the synthesizer to have a fatter body, you can adjust the filter sizer. And the filter sizer is really critical to being able to control what's going on with the XRIF uh, instrument because um, you want to have the ability to, you know, have a controlled chaos coming from the textures. So you're going to have all this variability happening, but you need to be able to put it in a box and encapsulate it. And that's what the filter sizer acts sort of like a frequency gate, perhaps more than that. But it's essentially, it could be a, a spectral gate as well, but really the focus is just on controlling the frequency at, at the moment so that you can control um, you know what what's going to be more uh, spectrum intensive what's going to be more frequency intensive to the spectrum They've, these of course could be equal so that's all that is and then both of these systems need to run to a guitar processor um, because what we have is a is a modulation of similarities and that's really the critical ingredient to a lot of modern sound um, is this sort of saturation point where the saturation is like the sweet spot um, where it's something that's kind of close to the other one it's sort of like an overpopulation of sound really it, 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 but it finds a way to be harmonious instead of destructive um, but of course you could make it destructive but that's really not the point of XRIF you want to have a lead synthesis system so we've, we all know about lead synths and we all know about lead guitars. So why not make a mesh and, and utilize the technologies of the synthesis? Because that's really what they're, they're, they're doing. They just don't call it x -Rifts. They don't They don't call it next generation keytar. Um, but it's essentially always about making a really cool hooky lead. So that you have something that captures people's imagination through the lead and the rhythmic gyrations of the lead. And so really quickly, one thing that I noticed is... Attack, sus, release, and mutes are critical to the articulations. Now, you could have tons of these, but are focused on these four because they're the most critical in terms of the x system because it's all about optimization. 
We don't want to deal with too many extra factors. There could be a little box over here that says these are the extra factors. That's a separate thing. But getting to the essential stuff is this. Because attack has so many ways of addressing attack with guitar synthesis and guitar modeling. And the same with synthesizers. Attack can mean so many things. Um, the sus portion is, is critical for many things, chords, but also the utilization of um, the melodic lines to make a lead instrument. And the melodic lines can have polyphony, um, or they can, of course, be uh, double stops, or they can just be solo you know, with legato. So that's the sus is a real critical one, too. Because you also want to be able to toggle, you know, your system so that you can play attack and sus and perhaps there'll be some way to make that, you know, more uh, playable on the fly than rather than key switching or whatever or uh, just using a knob or something. But you definitely want to have the ability to switch back and forth between, you know, a short sound and a long sound and the way that they mix is it's a thing called co-articulation I found out. And so they're always mixing, and people don't think about it, at least producers. And um, But that's what's really critical to making this magical glue, because the co-articulation is the glue to the articulation. All right, so release, that's also important in both of these aspects, because um, the release, it, it adds the life to the sound. So release is also controlled by gate as well. So that's why we have a final gate system here, just in case the release goes too, um, too wild for the system. In other words, there's too much rhythm happening when you let go. So that's whenever you let go, that's when the sound is going to keep sustaining and what's going to happen when you let go of the sound. All right, and so the other one is doesn't really have to follow this order, but I just it's important that there's a mute, um, a mute double stop uh, chug factor to both the synthesizer, I'm sorry, the synthesizer and the uh, guitar because um, you, you want to be able to blend these two worlds together in the mutes of the guitar and the mutes of the synth and that's really uh, easier because all the mute is really doing is you have an attack, you have the a little bit of a uh, sustain to that and maybe like a hold, just a little bit of one and it can it can modulate as well, so that it sometimes the whole position size changes in width, and so that creates um, a more life to the mute. Um, so that when we're talking about that, that's where we're talking about the intricacies of the, of the guitar, because that's not something you really find with synthesizers unless they, they go to the effort to program that in. The the width of like let's say a short sound doesn't necessarily jump around like it does when you're trying to do a mute with a guitar because the mute wants to actually bleed into a different kind of uh, uh, articulation. You want to, you, you either want to slip out of the mute or you want to have too hard of a mute. And so that's, there's a musicality to that too, to, to develop that quality. Anyways, um, so that's why it's critical for the, both of these. Now, one thing I'll mention is two critical things about the differences between these sides is the liveliness of the guitar fizzling focus, which includes those things like mutes and, you know, guitar pickups and, you know, simulations of this and that and the other thing, all the things involving guitar articulation, as many as possible. <clears throat> but, um, but also what's critical is the differential that happens when you're strumming the guitar. So the notes, it's a thing called note seed, apparently, that triggers a different um, effect at each time the sound is struck. So you, if you keep striking the same E over and over, it will sound slightly different, which is another magical quality to the guitar. That's why you can sit and play the same chord on the guitar for like 10 minutes and feel fine, you know. And so uh, that's what you do when you're an early guitarist. You're just kind of messing around. But um, so that's the, the that's a concept of noise seed that could also be built into this. But really, it doesn't need to be necessarily because, again, this is about optimization and making an essential um, core structure. And so the noise seed, the, that's going to add the flavor to the driving of this system because things that add the flavor um, to the, uh, let's say, affecting processes of the, the driven sound are the, the noise seed, 
the you know the differences in the tonality and the timbre that happen when you do that, and you know letting go the release. Um, this jumps around the idea of the, the the note, the string, the rhythm. I mean, it's such a complicated thing. There's so many things to consider with that. So, anyways, so let's say we got this section cleared. Though there's a lot more you can discuss about all that. <clears throat> and on the, on this side, I would say also one more thing is that you know the ability to switch in these different kinds of synthesis models. Um, you know, means that you're going to have really a huge variety of tonality available. But really, on the synth side, the main focus, if you're dealing with lead sounds, is going to be something that has a tendency towards the saw uh, oscillation or the saw, you know, waveform. So whatever's going to, you know, facilitate a saw plus whatever other textures, at least in terms of lead. Now, there's many kinds of leads, but the one that really cuts through is that you know, that synth saw. Anyways, so let's say we're done with understanding that. Now we go to, so we have the XY process to morph between all these. So that means sometimes you could be on an attack here, but on a mute here, or you could be on a mute here, an attack here, somewhere in between in these, you know, four different layers, you can be in the XY vector. All right. The next mixing system is the uh, important one. So we go through the guitar rack to develop this sound. Then we go through the, the guitar rack or some effects rack to develop this sound. Okay, and then the, the final, like, main shaping of the tone occurs through the morph, the spectral morph process. And the spectral morph process um, is really where the magic of X riff guitar would happen. Because... Um, that's spectrally picking and choosing. Besides all this other stuff that's happening, now you're going to go into the spectral realm and you're going to be able to pick different things from that to capture, okay? So there's a lot that goes on with the morph in certain plugins. And so that's a critical tone shaping tool that happens in the, in the final stages. So the morph is the magic, and when you're done with the morph and you got the sound you want, you can move on to the final gate, which will be basically the thing that puts that final amount of control over when the sound's going to cut off, if needed. Because as you know, guitar processors have the gating systems built in, because there's a lot of stuff happening with line signals and um, different kinds of amps doing things to the signal that make it go haywire, so you have a gate to make it stop completely when it's desired, like based on a certain threshold for the noise floor. So uh, the morph, you're gonna be able to jump between different spectral sections. You'll find your spectral section with an XY in the morph uh, controller. And then the final point is the final gate uh, to cut that all off, the, to make the final stop when needed. And then one final transient booster, which these actually can work together uh, because you can have a system that changes the attack and then changes the release simultaneously, which is a, a tool that I know is already available. So the, the, this, this is, these could both be thought of as like the final round, but the transient is essential to the final shaping of the um, desired amount of attack to the signal because once it's running through all this stuff, it could turn into a little bit of a mush because there's so much happening. So you have to bring the punch back um, in some, in, if desired, or if the things you're using aren't giving you the punch you want. So, and also the way the transient would work is there's multi-band transient, there's rhythmic transient, and there's, uh, you know, just your basic turning it on and making the attacks and things sharper based on a certain, th a certain threshold. So that will give you the control over the transients in the final stage to get the right desired amount of the lead for the X riff. All right, I'll leave it at that. 14 minutes is a lot of stuff. Um, so I'm going to try to build something like this. I don't know how, how long it's going to take in terms of uh, building it inside of a synthesizer workstation. I already have one in mind. Um, that's available as an audio unit. So I'll build it inside that and see how it goes. But this is the kind of thing that could be developed for Kitar as well, which is kind of what I've been trying to hint at, is the next generation of the idea of the lead sound or the Kitar sound as well.